Let's go outside and get that first key. Mm, then we must get Jimmy. The smugglers said they are going to destroy the lighthouse. They must have some pretty powerful explosives. Brilliant, Sam! Yes, um, yes, that's just what we need. Right, Mr. Tober, I want you together with Tom, Sam and that other rabble in the kitchen to knock up some sort of fake chest. Yes, and fill it with anything that looks even remotely expensive. We'll be as quick as we can. Right, Liz, grab your bathing costume. Good luck, Mr. Tober. Ah, and to you both. All right, you two, come on, we've got work to do. There's an old clothes chest up in the store, Tom. I'm not sure what we can do with it, but... Uh, not so fast, Tober. Get your hands in the air where I can see him. What the devil's going on here? Captain. What are you doing? Never you mind, Nipper. I'll make sure you get your dividends. Where's Stephen and his friends? Uh, they've gone. You've just missed them. What the hell do you think you're up to? I thought a treasure larking around has stirred us into action. And we're going to take a chance to be rich. We thought you were on our side. We're not on anyone's side. We were carrying some valuables on that ship before it foundered, and we believe that the cost of this lost treasure should be made up by ourselves. You're a bigger pair of thieves as the smugglers. You in league with them? As Mr. Bishop said, Sam, we're not on anybody's side. Jock! Don't do anything like that foolish again, boy. Now give me the gun. Murderers! I spit on you! Ah, now who are the villains? Is he dead? Mr. Bishop was right, sir. We are the villains now. Nonsense, Tom. You did what you had to do. We may be the villains, but we could so nearly have been the victims. As Stephen said, that treasure must fall into the right hands. Any luck yet, Steve? Not yet, Liz. Patience is a virtue, though. Contact Robo and get him to run a sweeping scan of the area. Perhaps he might be luckier. Yeah, sure. Listen, mate, when Steve gets back, he's going to shoot you both to your little bits of sausage meat. Did you hear that, Blake? We're going to be sausage meat. I don't care for your talk, boy. Now, if your friend has got the treasure, I suggest you wait here patiently until he brings it back. Blake, Blake, you, you want to be careful with that. Everybody has a darker side to them, boy. Even your friend. I don't reckon. But he's coming back with a treasure. Which means that you're never going to see no one again. Steve will come back. He wouldn't leave me here. We're mates. Money does strange things to you, mates, boy. How would you fancy a sailor's burial? Free of charge, of course. Any luck, Robo? Master, my scans have concluded that the key is approximately one mile due south of Tulane. Yes, 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 Therein. enough. Now just beam it aboard the Ventura, there's a good chap. Master, you're on it, beam me and Lizzie aboard too. It's freezing. So get the kettle on. Aren't you forgetting something? Oh yes, you're right. You better not forget this old baby. It's new. Are you losing your marbles? I meant Jimmy. He's still being held hostage in the lighthouse. Sugar and whippy cushions, you're right. Let's go and get him, quick. Get myself a couple of new fillies for my cars. All oh, proper thoroughbreds they'll be. I may even buy myself my own stables, huh? Stables? Yeah. You won't have enough for stables once I've taken my cut. Your cut? How much of this stuff you gonna have, Blake? You said it were 50-50 straight down the middle. I ain't sharing my fortune with you, Josiah Jones. I'm the boss here. I'm the one who sorted out this plan. Who was it that did most of the hard work? Me! Who was it that got the explosives from Mr. Krelper? And he's not an easy man to deal with. I don't care if you're to say your own mother, Josiah Jones. I'm the boss and not you. And because of your disobedience, what was 50-50 is now 70-30. 70-30? Voice free! Oh. Oh.
Where's Steve? You're free. Yeah, but those guys won't be far behind me. He he's outside looking for the treasure. Steve! Jimmy, grab your cap, we're going. Hang on a minute. That Blake guy, he planted loads of explosives down in the cellar. It's gonna go up like a rocket. He's done what? If you don't believe me. Well, I believe you all right, lad. He's been threatening to do it for two weeks now. I just never thought he'd go through with it. That ain't the half of it. The other bike knocked down the car door whilst escaping. We gotta get out of here. I agree, no present like the time. Come on, you guys, outside. No, I'll hold off the others. Now you go. Uncle. Oh, now come on, Tom. It's for the best. That I've had my life, yours is just about to start. Now do as you're told. Go. Barney, for God's sake, open this door. This place is going to go up. You got us into this mess, Blake. You can bloody well suffer the consequences. Barney, let us out or else we're all going to die. So be it, Blake. So be it. Come on, back to the Ventura. What about the others? What others? Tom and Sam, did, did they? Look, they're running off now, probably to tell someone about the lighthouse. The key? What about the key? What are we going to do? All taken care of, Jimmy. It's safely back on the Ventura, where we should be. I just hope the second key's not as difficult to find as the first. Poor Barney. He died in vain. That place was his life. And he took it because of two people that believe in local folklore. It's no consolation, Lizzie, but do you remember when the Savdra and the Tubkins were chasing us through time? Yeah. Well, if we hadn't recovered this key, this whole space-time continuum would be nothing more than a forgotten barren rock. The Earth would have been nothing more than a barren wasteland. Three to beam up, Robo. Yes, Master. Master? Nothing, Robo. Nothing. Steve. You right, mate? Steve, hello. Anyone here? Sadly, there is, Jimmy. What's up, Steve, mate? I don't know, Jimmy. It's... it's oh, never mind. Ah, chin up, old boy. We got the first key. One down, four to go. Look, it can't be all that bad. When you pick me up, there's a war going on. I was running around cover to cover, trying not to get killed. Our life would never be normal again. Now you tell me the Nazis retreated and the war was over. I know what you're saying, Jimmy, and it's really kind of you to think like that. I'm acting in purely a selfish and self-centred manner. The truth of the matter is I'm Stephen Brown, Stephen Weisler Brown from the city of Tasted on the planet Rhubarb. But every time I think about it, I'm not him. I'm just some imposter masquerading through time and space. Lizzie's taking it hard, harder than I thought she would. No, it wasn't easy having to say goodbye to you both when I was dying, only to be rejuvenated into this. I'm sorry, Jimmy. You shouldn't have to listen to all that. Lizzie. Don't say anything, Steve. I'm sorry. You were on death's door. We so nearly could have lost you. I could have lost you. And we've been given a second chance, and something that everybody wishes for. And I don't want to let that go. You've got it. And we've got it. I'm never going to let you go again. I promise. You've been there for me through thick and thin. I'm so sorry, Steve. Thanks, guys. I'm Stephen Brown. And Stephen Brown lives on. Forever.